Hi guys, it's Emily, and today I'm going to bring you my February TBR. I mainly wanted to do a February TBR to help promote the Laura Thon, which is a readathon being hosted by Elizabeth from Lizzie Faye Loves Books and Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf. And Elizabeth actually asked me to help co host this event. But I have some family and work commitments the weekend that's going on, which is February 7th through February 10th. And then they're also doing a live show on February 13th. And so I decided that would, those commitments would make it hard for me to be, you know, a very active co-host. So I declined to help co-host, but I still wanted to participate and help promote it. And I also wanted to help promote um, Elizabeth and Naomi actually are hoping at some point to do a read-along of all of the Ingalls family books. And the Ingalls family books include, of course, Laura's books, which are the little house books that everybody knows and loves. But then it also includes her great-grandmother, Martha, her grandmother, Charlotte, her mother, Caroline, and her daughter, Rose. And these other four women, their books are all out of print and are not even available on ebook. And so, um, Elizabeth and Naomi are asking their subscribers, along with everybody that participates in the readathon, to please email HarperCollins at this web or this email address right here, and ask them to put these um, books on ebook so that everyone can get them. And I will also link the email address uh, down there, along with Elizabeth and Naomi's um, announcement video. So, so the book I'm planning to read for Laura Dawn is Prairie Fires, The American Dreams of Laura Ingalls Wilder, which was by Caroline Fraser. I've had this book for several years. I got it for Christmas one year. And it's about, um, it's a biography of Laura and also of her daughter Rose. But I believe it's sort of looking at the unseen, darker side of Laura Ingalls Wilder's life and like how her family's home studies affected like the native populations in that area and some other things like she might have whitewashed some things. And I, so I think it's just looking at very, looking, taking a very sharp, look at Laura Ingalls Wilder's life and legacy. And I'm really interested in reading this, although I'm a little worried it's going to make me not love Laura Ingalls Wilder anymore. But I still want to read it and get at the truth. You know, I don't want to be living in ignorance if, you know, there's some truth out there that I need to discover. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to finally getting to this. So in addition to Laura Thought, I have seven other books that I want to read. Uh, the first two are books I'm currently reading and want to finish in February. The first one of those is The Paris Secret by Karen Swan. This is a contemporary fiction book where it's following a lady, oh shoot, I can't think of her name, Laura, and she's an art dealer. She works for a high-profile art a dealer firm and she and her firm are responsible for um, cataloging and selling the contents of an apartment that has been locked up for 70 years and there's like a mystery surrounding why it was locked up. The family was actually not allowed to go in there so they've sent this art dealer firm to look into it and Flora is investigating the paintings. There's some mysteries about one of the paintings that's very um, you know, valuable, and I believe there's also going to be a romance with the son of the family that owns the apartment. So far, I'm only like 30% in, and it's, you know, the romance part is just starting, and, uh, and I haven't really got to the main mystery part. It's okay so far, but I was into an, an audiobook, and it's, you know, very easy to listen to, so I'm hoping to get this done during the month of February. I'm also reading In the Country by Mia Alv Alvar, and this is a collection of nine short stories that are all dealing with either Filipino uh, citizens going to different countries or people of different countries coming to the Philippines. I started reading this based on the recommendation of my uh, subscriber Sandra. I actually, so when Sandra told me about this book, I was really excited and I went to put it on my list of books that I've been make, making for books that are set in the Philippines and that this book was actually already on there, but I'd forgotten that. So thanks for triggering my memory again, Sandra, and I've read the first two stories so far. I'm reading one a day and it's going really well so far. It's very interesting. I'm so glad that I finally 
reading a book about the Philippines after I, I've said, after I've said it was my goal for two years in a row. So yay! For my personal book club this month, we are reading Beowulf, a new translation by Maria Davada Headley, and this is like a feminist retelling of Beowulf. One of the ladies in my book club had read it in January and was raving about it in our uh, January meeting, and so we decided to make it our book in February, and because it's actually so short, it's only 140 pages. We're meeting the first Saturday in February, so I really need to get on this, and I think it's going to be really interesting. I haven't read Beowulf since high school, and I read the trans, uh, traditional translation, whatever, I'll, I'll put that guy's name right here. So, anyway, I'm looking forward for a, to, learning, or to seeing a new perspective on Beowulf through this book. For my book book club, the, our theme this month is love, which means we can read any book that's related to love. And I've decided to read Mount Vernon Love Story by Mary Higgins Clark. This is a book that my mom gave me back in December, and it's a, the fictionalized account of the love story of George and Martha Washington. And it sounds like it's going to be a sweet, quick book. Uh, I'm planning to listen to this on an audiobook after I finished The Paris Secret, and the audiobook is only four hours long, so I think it'll be, you know, I'll get it done in no time. But yeah, looking forward to getting to this. The next book that I want to read is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead, and this is a book I've had for over a year, so I really need to get to it, especially since I really enjoyed The Underground Railroad, which is his uh, first, like, big release. I think he had other things before that, but the Underground Railroad was the one that won the Pulitzer Prize. And I think, didn't this win the Pulitzer Prize, too, last year? I'm pretty sure it did. But, um, so this is about a boy named Elmwood, and he, um, is sent to, like, a boarding school called the Nickel Academy, and he is inspired by the, um, methods of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to be, you know, loving and do non-violent, uh, you know, um, protesting and things like that. But he has a friend named Turner who wants to, you know, try to overthrow the teachers there because they treat the boys very badly. And it's about the um, push and pull of these two mindsets and their friendship and how they come, and how they, like, make change in their institution. And it sounds like it's going to be a really hard read, but I think it's going to be really, really powerful as well. And I'm really looking forward to finally getting to this. For my March Mystery Madness prep, I want to read The Adventures of Maud West, Lady Detective, Secrets and Lies in the Golden Age of Crime by Susanna Stapleton. And this is a book about Maud West, who was a detective in London during the early 1900s, and she solved crimes for, like, the upper class. And she wrote a, um, like, case book full of, like, details about all of her different you know, successes working on these cases, and Susanna Stapleton has used this case book to uh, craft the life story of Maud West. This is a book that I heard about on um, Drinking by My Shelf. Emma raved about it, and I've been really interested in it, and I'm going to do a, a mystery history talk on Maud West, and I'm really excited, and you'll hear more about her uh, during March Mystery Madness. And I don't have this book yet. I ordered it from Blackwell's, and of course, the mail is all messed up, so I'm hoping that I'll get it by, like, late February, but if not, I'll just read it in early March. But either way, I'm really, really excited about this book. And then finally, I want to do my Anne of Green Gables read, read. This is book number four, uh, and this is, um, and of Wendy Popworth, and this is actually my favorite book of the whole series because it takes the form of letters from Anne to Gilbert, and I love epistolatory novels, and it's all about Anne's three years being the principal at Summerside High while Gilbert is going to medical school, and I'm really, really looking forward to rereading this one. So that's all I'm rereading in February. That's eight books, and I'm really excited about all of them. And then, of course, in March, it's going to be March Mystery Madness, so I'll be doing another TBR. So I hope everybody else has some great um, books on their list for February. I hope you're participating in Laura Thon. And once again, all that information will be linked 
down there. And I'm just looking forward to a great, exciting rainy month. Hope everybody's keeping safe and healthy, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!